What's going on, YouTube? This is Necro Steven. It's time for week four. That's correct, week four of the Indigo League of Legends. Now, I say that because I skipped week three against um, Sketchy Smeargle. He has some extenuating family circumstances and forfeited to give me the victory that week. But as far as I'm concerned, I'm still going to battle him again at some time, hopefully. So uh, I got a buy on that week. Uh, week four is up against Isaiah and the Minnesota, Minnesota Munchlaxes, excuse me. Now, Isaiah and I have a little rivalry going on, of course, one of my strongest rivals here. And for both previous seasons of the Indigo League of Legends, I managed to clutch out victories against him. So I knew he was going to come strong. And when Isaiah really uh, comes strong, he, he, tends to, he tends to get a little bit more creative. So I wasn't sure what to expect. What I expected was for him to have Mega Manectric and Slowking in this battle matchup. And he actually ended up going with Hariyama and um, I didn't expect to see Kecleon, I'll say that much. Uh, I did expect to see Hoopa, Jirachi, and Landorus though. So those are the three things that I did prepare for. So basically I was unprepared for half of his team. I did think I had enough good options to cover what he had in the team mates that I brought. Now what I have, I have the uh, max speed, a little bit bulkier um, with a little bit of special attack Latios. I have max speed, um, Charizard as well with Tailwind and Roost. So if he was carrying something, I expected him to have Scarf Hoopa or Scarf Lando, which he actually had neither. Hoopa didn't have an item going into the match to take advantage of Magician. And then Landorus ended up being Life Warped. Uh, so that really left Jirachi as a Scarf option. And then I had Mixed Embor expecting either Slow King or Quagsire, which he brought neither of those. And so that's completely wasted special attack too, because I don't end up using any special attacks on Embor in this battle. I did bring a tanky weakness policy Rhyperior with Stealth Rocks and Rock Polish, uh, Mega Horn and um, uh, Rock Blast for this battle. Kind of expecting him to hit me with something weaker from maybe something like Cresselia, but I neglected to remember that Cresselia gets Energy Ball, so that comes up later. In the start of this match, just seeing how much damage Fake Out does tells me that he's max attack, um, adamant, uh, Kecleon. I opted for Flare Blitz over uh, going for something like superpower because not only did he have the option to switch into Cresselia or Landorus, he also had the option of going for a Shadow Sneak, which would turn him into a Ghost type, rendering superpower completely uh, ineffective. So I get a nice little damage on Cresselia. I switch on into Rhyperior as he goes for Psy Shock. I really needed to figure out what type of Cresselia this is quickly. I was hoping he'd go for Thunder Wave there, but Psy Shock is good to see. Did not want to see Energy Ball right here. I didn't think he'd carry that type of coverage option on Cresselia. Maybe coverage like that on something like Hoopa. Uh, that sucks because I was about to click Mega Horn, but I figured he'd be threatened out into Landorus. But he just stays in and energy balls me, and so I get up my Stealth Rocks, but now I, I, I have to switch out if I want to save Rhyperior. Uh, Forges is a relatively safe switch here. Since he had energy ball, I really, really doubted that he would have Hidden Power Fire, which is something that I was worried about before I saw energy ball. But um, I don't get the information that he's actually a Calm Mind. Moonlight variant. I was worried that he was that, but since he doesn't set up in the beginning of the battle, he doesn't have that. Uh, and since he brings in Kecleon here, I went into the battle when I saw it on the um, front screen, going, okay, he probably has Fire Punch or Ice Punch on Kecleon in order to hit Fortress or Togekiss or uh, even Dragalge or something like that. Uh, he actually has Power Up Punch alongside Fake Out, so he gets a free plus one here against Rhyperior, and I, just, I went for an attacking move hoping that he would go for another power-up punch and I could put some serious damage on here, but he just goes straight for Sucker Punch, so that sucks. Uh, Rhyperior didn't really get to do anything in this battle. And seeing the team that he has and the way his Kecleon's moves are, I went out into Togekiss to bait an Ice Punch or Poison Jab, and I went out into Charizard only to get Rock Tombed in the face. Now granted, I was very tired at the time of this battle, but there was no reason to make that switch. Uh, even if he had gone for Poison Jab or for... Ice Punch, it wouldn't have KO'd that variant of Togekiss that I had, so it would have been a lot safer to either go into Fortress or to go into, or just to stay in and to attack him. Uh, that, that was just a stupid risk that I made, and I lost Charizard, which was an overwhelmingly huge threat against his team. It had such good presence, I had Tailwind. It also helped check the Cresselia, because um, Fire Blast boosted by the Sun is almost a two-hit KO on a fully defensive Cresselia. So I, I, I just made that move completely blindly. 
Um, and that really put me on tilt, honestly, because I wasn't expecting to lose Charizard in that manner. Uh, and that means the strategy now changes to get up as many entry hazards as I can and the four switches. I already got up Stealth Rocks. I already got up my um, uh, Toxic Spikes. One layer is better here than two just because of the things that he has grounded. They don't appreciate uh, poison because they're probably switching out back and forth. And so now we're going to get up as many layers as I can. I knew that Hariyama probably had Fire Punch because Kecleon did not have Fire Punch. And now I have to bluff whether or not I'm going to switch out into Togekiss, which can be very risky. Uh, Togekiss is threatened by several of the coverage options that Hariyama gets, whether it's Heavy Slam or Bullet Punch. Uh, it can also get Rock type moves. So Togekiss is not a very good switch into Hariyama. Knowing that, I'm just going to sit in here and set up spikes. Uh, he can go for Fire Punch whenever he wants, but every turn that he over predicts, I get up another layer of spikes. He gets a critical hit heavy slam after going for um, the fling to throw that flame orb. So I, I guess he's a Guts Hariyama, so we're taking some Guts boosted, boosted attacks here, but I, I really got up all three layers of my regular spike. So I have spikes, stealth rocks, and toxic spikes up. Now I have to predict around the rest of his team. I'm down three Pokemon at this point, and I don't really have anything to show for it, honestly. Uh, I love seeing Jirachi switch in. Here he actually surprises me by making a fantastic fodder of Landorus. I was very tempted to go for um, Nasty Plot, but I was also very worried that he would be able to KO me at that level of HP with, um, with his Pokemon. And so, uh, with the Heavy Slam, excuse me. And so he, he does a good job foddering him right there. If I had gone for Nasty Plot, I don't think he could have gotten into Jirachi reliably. Because even if he had Flash Cannon, since it looks like he's a special Jirachi, it wouldn't have been able to KO. And I could have hit him with a plus two uh, Aura Sphere or flinched him or anything like that. Uh, here, I went on the Latios just because I saw the Psy Shock. Uh, if you wanted to go for Iron Head, it wouldn't do that much to Latios either. And it is a Scarf Latios just to check Scarf Jirachi and Mega Manetric. Doesn't really do anything to Hoopa with Shadow Ball though. I really could have gone for a Draco Meteor there and been better off because that forced a 50-50 where I was very afraid that he would go for Dark Pulse against me. Um, but also I was very afraid that he would predict the switch out into Togekiss and go for Gunk Shot. Uh, he could have also gone for a more middle of the ground option such as Knock Off or uh, Hoopa just gets so many good coverage options that it's kind of annoying. But uh, since I don't have any special attack on Mr. Awada here, I'm unable to finish him off with an Air Slash, and I don't get the flinch either. So that sucks. At, during this whole exchange, not only does he whittle down Togekiss a little bit, but more importantly, he's able to steal Togekiss's leftovers, which really is annoying. If I had those leftovers, it would have made staying in against um, Kecleon a lot easier, knowing that he has Rock Tomb. And also, I would have had a better chance of winning a one versus one and a flinch war against Cresselia. So, all that being said, I knew he was going to go for Fake Out right there, that's just free damage. Uh, I'm going to stay in here and Roost because I know I'm faster. I'm going to take a Speed Drop from Rock Tomb, which is okay, because he's taking, he's taking Poison damage. Uh, also, with the if I go for the Roost here, I lose my Flying type, I don't take as much damage from Rock Tomb. But still, Rock Tomb does a ton of damage, for whatever reason, I was really annoyed by that. It, and it shouldn't be doing that much, but here, look how much damage it does to Latios as well. And it's just like, man, I, I'm just not prepared for what Kecleon is bringing to the table. And granted, I've battled against Kecleon before, I've battled with Kecleon before, but I was, I was just playing poorly at the end of the day. And I was a little bit, uh, I, I definitely thought I could still win, but I don't know. It, it was weird at the time because I didn't feel defeated at all. But it's just like, why is this Kecleon causing me so much trouble? Uh, once again, if I had brought Crawdon, I, I literally switched Crawdon right before the battle, then that Kecleon would not have been nearly as many issues as it was. I could have just clicked uh, Aqua Jet or Crab Hammer or Knock Off every time I came into the battle, basically. But that's okay. Uh, what sucks is that he tricked my Togekiss' Scarf during that exchange with Jirachi. So yes, I knocked out Jirachi, but this is where it's finally revealed that his Togekiss has Calm Mind and Moonlight. Uh, this sucks because I was operating under the assumption that it was just a more defensive Cresselia with support moves like Moonlight or maybe Thunder Wave. But since he has Calm Mind, this battle is essentially over because I don't have any way to break through him, especially after he's accrued plus two. Now what I can do is come in with Latios. He has to two hit KO me with Psy Shock from the sub of HP because I am a little bit more bulky, um, I believe. 
Uh, so he basically had a roll on whether or not he would KO me, and I could knock him right into the range where it was a roll for Embor to KO him with either two Flare Blitzes or a single Sucker Punch. But he does get a critical hit, which may or may not have mattered. It, it basically sealed the battle up instead of, instead of there being an eh chance that I could come back. Because now my only chance to come back is to go for air slash flinches, which I, I never thought I'd be in a position where it's like, yeah, I'm going to be that guy. Go for air slash flinches. This battle's over. But I had to come in here and click something. Uh, and yes, the battle is over, but that doesn't stop me. It, if I can flinch him to death, I will do it. Period. That that means I get to win. Um, but if I miss one or if he doesn't get flinched one time, I only have so many air slashes. And guess what? Every time he gets flinched, he's not using up a moonlight. He's also not calm mining. So I'm going to run out of PP for air slash before he runs out of PP to stall me out of air slashes. So it was really pointless. I think I was just frustrated with Cresselia because it's like if I had just clicked Megahorn earlier in the battle, you wouldn't even be here. So. Uh, Cresselia is one of the Pokemon that I really hate facing in League format because I always feel like I have plenty of options against it, but it never seems to necessarily matter if I play poorly because it's just so bulky. Uh, plus, his counterpart Darkrai is a lot cooler anyway. But that's okay though. Uh, I do end up missing an Air Slash, and not only does he get his HP back, but eventually I don't flinch him, so he can 2 KO me with Psy Shock from this range. I don't flinch him here either. I would have liked to take his HP down a little bit more for Embor, because then that would have at least put him in range for a critical hit expert belt, and then the battle would have been over because all he had left was Kecleon and Hariyama, who would have both died to entry hazards basically on the way in. Oh, so frustrating. So very, very frustrating. I, I, uh, he played really well. Well, I played really poorly at the end of the day. Um, so that's why I'm okay with the loss, but at the same time, there are so many ways it could have played that better. Uh, the, the main play that I could have done better is, number one, if I had gone for Megahorn against the Cresselia, knowing that I had a weakness policy, even if he had gone out into anything, uh, number one, I wouldn't have revealed that I was weakness policy. Number two, I would have hit something and then thereby maybe gotten some information on his Pokemon. Uh, if he had gone into Landorus, hit him with the Megahorn, hopefully. I see that there's no leftovers. Tells me that it's either Scarf or Earthplate. That's good information early on. And from where I go out in the Fortress. If he had stayed in, Cresselia dies. Uh, setting up Stealth Rocks at that point in the battle wasn't that important, but um, since I didn't see the the Mega Manectric or the Slow King, it just I, it kind of gave me tunnel vision, actually, I guess at the end of the day. Uh, the other poor play that I really, really could have improved on was switching in Charizard to Kecleon like that. Because I knew that Kecleon got Rock Tomb, I just didn't think he would have brought it because Rock wasn't the best coverage option against my team. But since he knows I have access to Mega Charizard, why, why wouldn't he do that, I guess? I don't know. It makes perfect sense. I played poorly with those plays, but that just means we'll play better next time and um, we'll win. That's what we will do. Uh, but in the meantime, we're gonna hold this, we're gonna hold this loss and we're gonna prepare for, I think next week, actually. Week five, we're gonna be going up against Johnny Diesel. And we know that once again, another opponent that is no slouch. Uh, we battled Johnny Diesel before, so we have our work cut out for us. Hopefully this recording works this time, because this is the second freaking time that I'm doing it, and we'll hope that it goes through. I hope you guys have a great week. For those of you guys in the United States having a wonderful three-day weekend, I hope that this battle was at least entertaining enough for you to cap it off with. In the meantime, have a great day. Have a great night. Have a great morning, whenever you watch it. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye now.